Welcome to Geosynthetica's GeoTalk podcast, where we discuss geosynthetics and affiliated issues in civil and geotechnical engineering. I'm Chris Kelsey, editor of Geosynthetica.net. In this episode, we talk with Dr. George Kerner, director of the Geosynthetic Institute. Dr. Kerner had the honor this year of delivering the first Kerner Lecture, a series named in honor of his father, Dr. Robert Kerner, who is internationally recognized as one of the godfathers of geosynthetics and who continues his work as Director Emeritus at GSI. Last year, I had the pleasure to see both Kerners at a conference in Chicago and joined them one morning along with many of their family members and a few bold engineers in a three-mile pre-conference run along the lakeshore. It was, in its way, emblematic of what George and Bob bring to geosynthetics, which is absolute energy and engagement and a drive to get people to come together. Be interested. Don't pass up the opportunities we have to contribute, to recognize the contributions of, of those around us, and to keep getting better. In his lecture, George focused on a topic that the Geosynthetic Institute has monitored and studied for many years, exposed geomembrane performance. We spoke during the Geotechnical Frontiers 2017 conference in Orlando. I'm talking today with George Kerner, who's the director of the Geosynthetic Institute. Uh, He has just issued the inaugural Kerner Lecture at the Geotechnical Frontiers Conference 2017 here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, George, I want to talk to you about exposed geomembrane coverings. This is a topic that I think has been kind of slowly growing. Uh, in interest in the field, there's been, you know, at this point, kind of an aborted attempt to create uh, solar generating, you know, exposed caps on landfills. But at the same time, there were also developments with um, capping systems that have used percussion anchors and less trenching. And so you you have a lot more people going on arguing in favor of using exposed covers. And we have some other systems with synthetic turf put on them. But you have been doing some further research into it. Okay, what, what is GSI finding now? What, what do we know about exposed cover performance? Exposed cover performance is really done well with uh, polyolefin uh, geomembranes. Yes. Um, the trenching procedure for hollings was uh, fantastic. These are longitudinal trenches, call them burritos. And uh, Florida Florida has pioneered that work. We're in Florida now. But uh, several of these facilities have undergone uh, direct hits with hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Uh, An exposed uh, geomembrane cover will save tremendous maintenance, uh, particularly from that thin veneer of soil uh, being had to uh, erosion control for that. So there's a huge savings in, in that regard. Uh, to get the geomembrane to last for 30 years for the uh, post-closure p- care period is uh, in our reach, uh, mm-hmm. even in the harshest environments. So that's rather refreshing. Uh, there are design challenges for that, but uh, we can overcome them. With the uh, 30-year post-closure care period, what then becomes of the geomembrane once the exposed geomembrane, once medium is? This is uh, do right. Do have to be replaced or an additional cap put on for it and then soil covered at that point? Or? There's there's actually a business in that evaluation yep. uh, to be made, what to do with this. Okay. And thinking of sustainability, um, if you could have the, the best case scenario is to have the geomembrane last and then place the final cover directly over it without having to replace the yeah. geomembrane only to repair it. Yeah. But uh, other scenarios which are talked in regards to sustainability is to actually mine the geomembrane, use it, recycle it, yeah. um, and then uh, move on from there. 
Um, there are the conversations with uh, particularly the thinner materials to use them in that application and then subsequently come back with a 40 mil HG or linear low density polyethylene mm-hmm. for the final cover. When you're, when you're, you are looking into exposed covers. Are you primarily looking at landfills then, or are you looking at other applications? Um, it's almost always uh, landfills. Yep. I see this for um, um, subtitle D facilities, subtitle C facilities, and uh, coal combustion residual or construction and demolition debris. Mm-hmm. So, so we don't look at, we're not considering along this line how, say, reservoirs where, you know, they may have partial exposure or you know, there's fluctuating rates so some of it. It's interesting you say that. We uh, are doing a reservoir for the Corps of Engineers right now. Yeah. It's 270 acres in size. Um, it's at the confluence of the, uh, the Delaware and Chesapeake Bays. Yeah. There has to be a canal running between the two of them, and that canal needs to be dredged. So they're pumping it into a storage facility, yeah. and this storage facility is a lined... Um, lagoon, so to speak. However, it's not an exposed geomembrane. They have a geotextile over it for puncture protection, okay. and then a they pump the slurry into it or have a soil layer over the slopes. Yeah. So it's truly not exposed like um, okay. the exposed geomembrane cover would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the state with floating covers? Floating covers are uh, a, a niche. Yeah. This uh, niche is uh, put in due to uh, two items in particular. One is uh, fecal matter from uh, birds, mm-hmm. and the second is uh, from a terrorist uh, yeah. standpoint. Uh, floating covers are all the water departments need to either put them in tanks or cover the uh, facilities. The, actually, the reservoirs do exist. Tanks are extremely expensive, and the, the volumes certainly aren't there. Yeah. So uh, the uh, flotation, <coughs> pardon me, the flotation devices are uh, complicated, and it's a specialty contractor who will install yeah. and sometimes design that. Are we? What's the design life we can get out of floating covers now? I know that about ten years ago that was a little bit of debate. Floating covers, even in the harshest environment, with the uh, new additive packages, yeah. are um, upwards of 35, 50 years. Wow. So uh, really can extend those uh, lives of mm-hmm. the materials. Yeah. They're the scrim reinforced materials and uh, certainly better formulations than we've had in the past. The big change in there was with um, the, the disappearance and then reappearance of chlorosulfonated polyethylene. Uh, and was due to having lead in the formulation, which uh, is not not responsible from an environmental perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So the big change came with that. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the going back to the exposed cover dust analysis, uh, you've been involved with in tracking sites here in Florida. Are there any cost estimates? Any cost benefits uh, you've looked at? Chris, I'm not good with costs. Okay. Um, a lot of this was incentivized, uh, particularly with solar panels uh, yeah. that were with them. Uh, that whole process has, has worked. It appears that the rigid panels are uh, a little bit more benefit cost than the flexible uh, yeah. solar panels at this time from an efficiency standpoint. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the costs are, are quite comparable and uh, particularly if you um, your 30 year post closure period is uh, is reached at 30 years yep. you, the big issue is when that time horizon extends then you uh, yes. seem to be cost uh, cut and uh, the the costs are quite a bit different than the benefit yeah george i appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to share your insight with us chris uh, and you're a dear friend and uh, i wish you all the best thanks for the opportunity thank you
It's always nice to talk with the Kerners. For more information on the Geosynthetic Institute's work, monthly webinars, accreditation services, white papers, short courses, and more, visit www.geosyntheticinstitute.org. There is a dash between Geosynthetic and Institute in the organization's web address. We've also got additional links to GSI and geomembrane-affiliated information in our podcast article on www.geosynthetica.net. And you can always click on the Media tab on our website to find our weekly podcast stories and additional resources. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.